All right, welcome to Mr. Pista Plays. First impression set review of Kaldeheim with a brawl mentality, a brawl outlook. We've had the format for about two weeks. Uh, I put out a lot of videos and I got to play a lot of these cards. I've tried to put a lot of these cards into my decks. And now that I've been, we've had the set and I can put some impressions. What do I think is good? What do I think is not good? What do I think is the best? What is fringe playable, meaning what is archetype dependent? We'll get into our scale with things that I don't see will be played in any deck. I call them not great. Tribal architect dependent cards like elves, angels, life gain matters kinds of cards. They are called, I'm calling them fringe playable. Because you can put them in the deck, but you probably want to have a purpose for them. And then cards that can be played in any deck that don't need a purpose, that don't need a build around. I've called those the best. So let's get into our first impressions of white, starting with the commons of Kaldeheim. So the not great ones, Axgard, Burgeret, Doomscar, Oracle, Giant, Ox, Story, Seeker, Cold Spell, Cleric, God's Hall, Guardian, Warhorn Blast, Wings of the Cosmos, and Old Maw Champion. Of these, I think the three that kind of, I think, could see some play would be Doomscar Oracle, Story Seeker, and Warhorn Blast. The first two, Doomscar Oracle and Story Seeker, because life gain does matter. There are some commanders in the format, and they're also clerics, so that also does help them. And then Warhorn Blast because it is a cheap-ish foretell that gives all your creatures a 2 plus 1. And there are some, not many, uh, token variant commanders in the format that I think they play well with. The others, ugh, I just don't see them doing much of anything in the format. All right. Those are not great. Or I think they're not great. Remember, these are my opinions. If I... If you think something should be in a different category, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Fringe playable. What cards do I think are in the fringe playable category? We have Battlefield Raptor, Invoke the Divine, Beskir Shieldmate, Revitalize, Valor of the Worthy, and Stalwart Valkyrie. So Battlefield Raptor and Valor of the Worthy kind of fit together in the Aura Matters type decks. So a one mana, one two with first strike. Means you make this thing any bigger and it could become a beast, not just a bird. Uh, the, invoke the divine and revitalize. You want to destroy artifacts and enchantments and you want to draw cards. And the incidental life gain in some of those life gain style decks could potentially fit these cards. Best your shield mate if you're doing a sacrificial style of deck, leaving behind a 1-1. One, one, being able to sacrifice it again uh, could be worth, worth it. And it's also a warrior, and there are some warrior matters decks. Stalwart Valkyrie, it could be a cheap angel for you in your angel tribal deck. And it's also a warrior. So maybe it plays in those as well. So those cards, fringe playable. They have some synergies with other decks, and they're also just, I think, half decent cards. And then what do I think are the best? We have three. We have Bounding Gold, Iron Verdict, and Starnheim Corsair. Bound in gold, you can enchant permanent. So it doesn't just have to be creature. Most of these style effects are just enchant creature. You can enchant this onto a land to stop its activated ability. You could put this on a planeswalker to stop its activated ability. Or you could put it on a creature to stop it and get through. I think it's very versatile. I think it's one of the better um, of these style effects. Iron Verdict for three mana to deal five damage to target tapped creature isn't the greatest rate, but for telling this for one white for, and then casting this for one white, that is good value. People don't probably see it coming, especially if you're playing blue or black. They're thinking of other uh, foretell cards, so they think they might be able to attack freely. Pop one mana, five damage, does a good job. And then Starnheim Corsair, giving your, making artifacts and enchantments one colorless mana cheaper could mean the difference between, a, between t playing two spells in one turn 
playing a mana wrap mana rock and then playing something that affects the board it's also a flyer and getting in with flyers is one way that a lot of decks tend to like to try and win i think these are the best white commons in and from kaldheim and they can be slotted into your deck if you're not wanting to use your wild cards on rares and mythics and you want to still play brawl these are some great options in white then we're going to some uncommons the not great uncommons are as clarion spirit divine gambit batter shield warrior valkyrie's sword this two mana two two it's sometimes late early game it might be cool but more often than not you're playing two drop three drop four drop you're trying to curve out you're not trying to go two drop two drop one drop unless you're playing really low to the ground so i don't think this really fits divine gambit it's a gambit it's a gamble and when people are playing haymakers in a format like this i don't think it really works battle shield warrior uh a combat trick that people can see coming uh, would much rather play the common uh, one that costs one more when you cast it from foretell and it gets a little bit more value this being and it's uh, three mana two two just doesn't quite do it for me seven mana for a six five angel there are so many better angels the lower cost and the fact that this doesn't give anything but two plus two plus one on its face value i just don't think that's great cool card but i don't think it's worth the investment cards that i see that are fringe playable in white all goes as usher of the fallen and spectral steel usher of the fallen i put this here because there are some warrior decks that do want one drops more so than the spirit on the following page that i didn't think was great i think this could see play because the warrior decks want to curve out and maybe that spirit deck spirit card does fit in the warrior deck but you want the warrior synergies and also being able to create one ones if you got nothing else to do on turn two and they don't have a blocker you might be able to get one or two warriors out of this and then they synergize with other cards could you could put it in some kind of deck like that spectral steel being able to return auras specifically from your graveyard as enchantment or equipment usually don't go to the graveyard unless they're like the really good ones like Embercleave and all of the Skyclaves. So getting those back is nice, but also when an equipment or an aura goes to the graveyard, it goes to the graveyard with the creature. This is one way to get them back. And I think in aura and equipment centric decks, I think this could be something that is worth our while. And what do I think are the best commons or uncommons from Kaldeheim in white. We have Shepherd of the Cosmos, Haya's Onslaught, and Ruin of Sustenance. Shepherd of the Cosmos fits in Angel decks, fits in Warrior decks. And if your deck is really low to the ground, I put this in one of my decks that had like 17 two drops or lower, plus Evolving Wilds and Fabled Passage. So to be able to cast this first for tell cost and get a four mana three three but it brings back another permanent even if it is just a land great value great card and i can see it being played in a lot of decks that are either low to the ground or just want a four mana three three flyer hard to deal with high is onslaught it's another one of those foretell cards that can just get you out of nowhere it can win games it can make a five power creature hit for 12 um and yeah for one white mana especially if you're playing in like i said with the other foretell cards there are only a few that are playable in the format so people are going to be able to kind of guess maybe what you have but uh this is pretty solid i think and then rune of sustenance drawing cards in white is something that's uh hard to do in some cases lifelink is a very rele relevant thing in both cre in angels clerics lots of decks will want this and being able to put this on an equipment is really nice because then when the creature dies this stays with the equipment and you get to continue making other creatures have lifelink i think it's the best white on common all right let's get into our rares and mythic 
rares of Kaldheim for white. So what do I think is not all that great? We have Runeforge Champion, Sigrid, God Favored, and Redain, God of the Worthy, alongside Valkmir Protector's Shield. So I played a lot of games of Magic in the last two-ish weeks. And I played white. And Redain only fit in one deck because of her flying ability. Uh, Snowlands are something that a decent amount of the field play. But she's just going to get killed and then... Eh. Her shield, on the other hand, I think is a bit better. But still, I just haven't put her in a deck when I was playing White. just hasn't happened. Other cards outclass her, unfortunately. Secret God favored. People are playing Haymakers. And a 2-2 two -two flash first strike. Uh, there, uh, the God thing could come into play. And, but when she enters the battlefield, exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature until Sigurd leaves the battlefield. Yeah, that's nice. But her two toughness is just pop any burn spell, all the black removal, all the green fight spells. Um, she just doesn't stick around. You're much better. You're much better off to uh, have an, an enchantment that does this ability. And then Runeforge Champion. The runes, yes, sure, they are probably some of the better uncommons in the format. But in white, you get one if you're playing mono white. If you're playing a multicolor deck, the most you're going to get is, well, if you're playing five color, you get all five. But I don't think five slots or ruins in a five color deck is really where you want to be. Boros, you get two. Um, and honestly, when I made my Boros deck, I didn't. I had it in originally with the two ruins, but then they just got outclassed by other things. And because the ruins left, so did Rune uh, Runeforge Champion. So I just don't think they're uh, a great investment in your wild cards. If you get them from packs, sure, give them a try. It's not that they don't fit into decks. I just don't think that I think there's a lot of better cards in the format. These are fringe playable ones that fit into other specific archetypes. Styles, Rally of the Ranks, Search for Glory, Righteous Valkyrie, and Halvar, God of Battle and Sword of the Realms. For this first one, Search for Glory, I don't play Grim Tutor in my black deck, so I don't really see Search for Glory as something that I'm going to play in my white decks all that often. Maybe you're searching for a specific win condition um, or a saga. But otherwise, I just don't think the instant and life gain is kind of nice. But uh, yeah, I just don't think it's worth it. If you get it from a pack, cool. Um, rally the ranks. You got to be playing specific tribals for this to do anything for you. That's why it's in fringe playable. If you're playing a deck with 13 warriors in it, go for it. But if you're playing a deck with two of this and one of that and three of this and four of that and two of this... You're not going to want Rally of the Ranks, so it's very fringe playable. Righteous Valkyrie, Angels and Clerics matter for this card, also gaining life. Um, so I think that's where it fits. I don't think it fits outside of those kind of decks. Halvar, God of Battle. You want equipment. You want auras. Not all decks run equipment and auras. Sword of the Realms could probably be played in a lot of decks, but a lot of decks aren't looking for this style of effect. So... Uh, yeah, I think if you're moving the card from fringe playable into the best, the sword would go in the best. Halvar would go in fringe playable. And then the best rares and mythics from the set, Glorious Protector, Doomscar, and Starnheim Unleashed. Being able to protect yourself from Doomscar is pretty cool. Uh... I don't know if this doesn't really fit in the angels tribal deck. It would fit in a cleric's tribal deck because a lot of your clerics won't be angels. Um, and being able to whoop, pick up everything and then whoop, spit them all back out after a removal spell happens, such as Doomscar or Blood in the Snow that we'll get into with Black. Uh, yeah, I think it, and it has Fortell. And it's a three mana, three, four flyer from the Fortell zone, which is pretty sweet. Doomscar, five mana, destroy all creatures, and three mana to. Uh, foretell this three mana wrath is great. I think every deck needs some kind of eject button. 
uh, I'm falling behind. I'm falling behind on lands. And being able to be in some ways mana screwed and still be able to blow up the board with this card. If you're playing white, you're playing this card. And also, I think if you're playing white, you're playing Starnheim Unleashed. Four mana for a 4-4 four, four white angel warrior creature token flying and vigilance. Eh, it's okay. It's not a great rate. But the foretell of white XX... If you have five mana, you get two. If you have seven mana, you get three. It scales really well. You can foretell it early. So you can be like, oh, I got a foretell card. But if it gets too late, they probably can figure it out. It is Starnheim Unleashed. But it does just... that You cast it, and they don't deal with it. It ends the game on the next turn. If you have ways to give your creatures haste, then it ends the game that turn. So those are the best cards in white. As far as uncommons, commons, and rares and mythos go. All right. We're going to move into blue. A fun color. Not everyone's forte. I know that. Um, but the blue cards, here they come. Commons, uncommons, rares, and mythics. We're going to start with blue commons. We have cards that I don't think are all that great. Anul, Augury Raven, Rurg Strider. Brian Barrow Intruder, Hilfering Hawk, Frost Peak Yeti, Undersea Invader, Mist Walker, and Mists of Lit Jara. Of these, Anal could probably see some play if you're really, really worried about that five color prismatic bridge and possibly something along the lines of Mist Walker. It is a changeling, and sometimes changelings are a valuable creature type. But these cards, they all have much better equivalents in other sets. If Bergstrider didn't have to have colorless mana for it to keep something tapped down, I think it would probably be pretty good because it is a giant and it is a wizard. But unfortunately, that is a clause in the card. So only being able to lock down something once, probably not that great. All right. Those cards are... Eh. I think they're just okay. And let's move into the ones that are fringe playable. Find the monster, Bane, Disdainful Stroke, Hardfell, Harbringer, Run Ashore, Draugr, Thought Thief, Strate Strategic Planning, and Lit Jara Kin Seekers. All right, so Bind the Monster, one mana, very efficient. Um, but having something deal a lot of damage to you, not so efficient. But uh, if you're in a pinch and you're looking for a budget option, I think, yeah, it's definitely something that you could do. The Stainful Stroke, people are playing lots of Haymakers, but then they, the odd time you'll draw this and it's going to do nothing for you. Literally just going to sit in your hand and yeah. I don't think it's fringe playable. I don't think it's the best card. I think it's something that you could play. Same with Carful Harbringer. It taps to add one blue for instance and sorceries and for tell cards the tear card thing is what makes it a little bit better run ashore there are other spells at six mana that do a heck of a lot more than this but if you are in a pinch and you want a budget option this card could do some work for you Draugr thought thief having a three two that surveils effectively for yourself or if you're really worried about what they have on top of their deck because they scry to the top uh, you could play this card it's not the best but I think it could see some fringe play in such as like Thassa. I might try to slide it into my Thassa deck. Strategic planning. You are playing with your graveyard. Sure, this card is pretty cool. Otherwise, I just uh, I don't think it's that great. The Jara Kin Seekers. Here again, you need to be playing Tribal. And a 4 mana 2-4 that scries 1. Or 3-5 that scries 1. Eh, it's not all that great. The best blue... Commons, Behold the Multiverse, Depart the Realm, and Raven Form. Notice they all have Foretell. You can all make them cheaper. Scrying 2 and Drawing 2 for 2 mana is very, very efficient. Uh, 1 mana return target non land permanent to its owner's hand is very efficient. And giving blue uh, the ability to exile artifacts or creatures. Sure, you leave behind a 1-1, one, one, but most decks can deal with 1-1 one, one when you can't deal with a... Uh, uh, Seven six Kogla or a gigantic Vorinclex. Sometimes blue just can't deal with those other than bouncing them. And bouncing 
uh, Kogla is not a good thing. So I think these are the best. I think you should put them into pretty much any blue deck. Raven form, you're wanting to put that in more mono blue. More so than other colors because other colors deal with artifacts and creatures. Um, but for mono blue to have a card like this, I think it's really, really strong. All right. Like, subscribe, notify. Haltheim, Uncommons in blue. Here we go. Not great. Frost Augur and Frost Pyre Arcanist. Looking at the top card of your library for one snow mana, you're running 100% snow lands and a few snow creatures. You're probably looking at like 60% of the time you're drawing a card. You could just play a one mana looter that always draws you a card. So in that for that case, other than the fact that it is snow and is a wizard, I don't think it fits. Uh, Frostpire Arcanist. You could get a really cheap one. Uh, you can make this one mana 2-5, but you're never going to use this ability because we can only play one of any kind of card. So, uh, yeah, it's just not great. I don't think you're going to put this anywhere. French Playable, Avalanche Caller, Glimpse the Cosmos, Inga Runize, and Icebind Pillar. The first one and the last one, you need snow mana. Unless you're running snow lands, you're not playing these cards. If and if you're running snow lands, you're not necessarily playing these cards. Um, Ice Spine Pillar, sure, get something out of the way. But uh, you're, I think you're better off using a spot removal spell that gets the creature off the battlefield completely. And then Glimpse the Cosmos, you're only playing in Giants. Ingarunize, you're probably playing in a Thassa style deck. Um, the fact that it's legendary, if this wasn't legendary, oh boy, that would be so much better. Um, but the fact that it's legendary and you can't make tokens of it and have the tokens hang around, I just don't think it's, uh, is worth all that much other than specific decks like maybe Thassa. And then the best uncommons in the set for Brawl, Giant's Amulet, Rune of Flight, and Saw It. Coming the first one giving hexproof and also having a five mana four five with hexproof that is a giant wizard is pretty good. Um, and then the giving hexproof when it's untapped, a lot of your commanders, hey, if you've built your deck around it and you don't want to get it in the combat, having it uh, untargetable is very cool. Rune of flight giving a creature flying is really awesome, or putting this on an equipment to give the equipment flying. So when you attach it to your creature and the creature dies, you still get the flying and being able to draw a card. It's gravy. Blue's got lots of ways to do that. A slot coming, a very efficient counter spell. It fits right in there. When I play blue, this is one of the th three-ish counter spells that I will play unless I'm playing a dedicated um, counter spell style deck. This one fits in. It's cheap. It's a foretell card. You can bluff other foretell cards, and yeah, I think it goes a long way. Those are the uncommons and commons of Kaldheim or blue. Let's get into some rares and mythic rares of blue. Not great. We have Ascendant Spirit, Icebreaker Kraken, Reflections of Lityara, Haka Whispering Raven, along with Alrund, God of the Cosmos. And Ovar, the all form. Now remember, these are rares. These are mythics. They're going to be powerful. Whether I think they're great or not. Ascendant Spirit. Oh yeah, sure, it's nice. You pump all this mana and then boop. One bounce spell. And all your work, all your investment, gone. Uh, in a standard format or a historic format, I think this could potentially do a lot better. But in a format where... There's a lot, a lot of pinpoint removal, and you've invested so much into this. I just don't think it's worth it. Icebreaker Kraken. This costs way too much for what it does. Maybe, maybe. I'm going to try it in Thassa and see what happens. But, um, yeah, I just don't think it's all that great. Reflections of the Lidjara. Five mana for something that doesn't do anything right away. Uh, and also having to be very, very tribal centric. I just don't think it's really in that that realm of ideal. Arun, God of the Cosmos, and Haka, Whispering Raven. The Raven's interesting. I just don't think it, for two mana, you have to, you play it, you wait a turn, you attack with it, you bounce it, you play it, you wait a turn, 
and then Arun, God of the Cosmos. Unless you're scrying a lot or have giant hand size, I just don't see him doing a whole lot. I haven't played him in my blue decks. I've tried him and it just doesn't work over the all form. I think it's a great card to play as a commander uh, as far as blue tempo goes. But uh, being the fact that you have to target your own things and there are not that many good things for you to use to target your own things. I found about 10 of them. If you've uh, watched my over the all form deck and yeah, I just don't think it fits in anything other than itself. So those are the not great legendary or not great mythics and rares in Kaldheim. Let me know if you disagree um, in the comments below. I don't mind having a discussion. Uh, just be nice. Fringe playable. Graven lore, mystic reflection, cosmos charger. Those are the three cards that I think are somewhat fringe playable. Mystic reflection is moving more and more towards being... A best card um yeah but we have to play more of the format see more of the format these are first impressions this is after playing for a couple weeks uh graven lore you need snow lands if you're not playing snow mana this is just five mana draw five which is not great but being able if you have snow lands and being able to dig eight deep with the scry is really good Cosmos Charger. I played it in my uh, Fortel Azorius Control deck with the Watcher, Vega the Watcher. But otherwise, I just don't see it being much of a thing, to be fair. You need a lot of Fortel for this to be useful. And then the best we have Aldrin's Epiphany, Cyclone Summoner. And then Kazuma, God of the Voyage. Aldrin's Epiphany, of all the blue cards, I think this is the best one, hands down. Um, six mana to take an extra turn in a format such as this, such as Brawl, I think is fantastic. Getting the two birds out of the deal, just kind of gravy. Um, paying even having to pay full seven for it is pretty good too. Not too bad. If you're playing blue-green, you're going to be able to cast this very, very efficiently. And then otherwise, you're probably playing it on... You're playing another turn, you want to win the game. Cyclone Summoner. 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. In a dedicated Wizard Giant deck, this is great. Uh, it, there are times when you play it and you're not going to bounce everything they have, but you're going to bounce 75% of it. And then hopefully you have generated enough mana that you can play this, plus play one or two of your things to use your mana before your opponent has to... Um, Claw back and you can set this up you can bounce their giant to, and then play this or their wizards and then play this so you have the control to set up a single-sided cyclonic rift style effect it's not as good as cyclonic rift obviously but uh it's a good card and then cosmo god of the voyage her ability and being able to draw a lot of cards and effectively use your land drops this is one of those cards that's like well, you're always playing land. So if you can get this into exile, you're probably, hopefully, playing three or four lands before you say, I don't want to, and then boom. And then you have like a four, five, or a five, six on the battlefield. And it's really good. Or a five, seven, I should do different. And then the Omen Keel, uh, you could put this kind of like a Halvar, except. The creature goes in the best and the omen keel goes in either to be honest with you it's not all that great but cosmo herself is really really good all right those were all the white cards and blue cards in Callaheim. as we play more i'm sure some of these um impressions will change cards will move up cards will move down some cards will stay the same and yeah those are my thoughts my opinions if you disagree comment below what do you think i missed where do you think my impressions went wrong yeah i'm mr pisto have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or night wherever you are in the world bye for now we'll be back with the next set of colors all right take it easy